Stick with me. I'm going to teach you how to harvest milkweed seeds and then regrow them to help out the monarch butterflies. A lot of people look at milkweed plants as weeds because they have this toxic milk in them. It's this white substance that if you get it on your hands, it kind of is toxic. It's not good. But monarch butterflies really need these things to live. So there's been a big movement over the last uh, few years to get people to put back in common milkweed. It's pretty much essential. Uh, these butterflies prefer this plant. It pretty much lives only on milkweed and then lays its eggs on these plants. And also they go on the babies to eat the milkweed. They actually use the uh, toxic substances in the milkweed to protect themselves. So when they're these colorful caterpillars, if a bird eats them, um, it's toxic. So that is their defense is these, uh, not only they get nutrients, but they also borrow the toxic ability of the plants. Pretty smart. And then, uh, of course, they, uh, they make little chrysalis and then they fly off to uh, South America. So a lot of people, myself included, are trying to help these guys out. And uh, I'm going to take you through on how to take a pod, one of their pods, the milkweed pods, and you bust it open. There's a bunch of wool inside. And then I'm going to show you how to harvest the seeds and what to do with them so you can get them to regrow. So I've been meaning to do this for a little while, but this is some milkweed I got last year's wild milkweed. Um, when Kate and I were visiting the butterfly farm in Massachusetts, I grabbed a few pods. So I knew that they should be able to grow around this region. Hopefully Massachusetts, uh, if things grow there, they'll grow here. And this, I'm pretty sure, is common milkweed. Now, I've removed the seeds from this fluffy shaft. I put them in the fridge for a few weeks just to keep them cool. It lets the seeds stratify. I'm not sure if I left them in long enough. I'm hoping um, that was long enough. To, you have to cool them down a good bit. And then what I'm going to do is I wet this paper towel down and you want to wet it, but you do not want it so wet that it drips. You just want to make sure that it is barely um, dripping. And you'll see this technique used for a lot of different seeds to start them. You really want to make sure you don't, um, otherwise you get moldy seeds. Now, the thing about milkweed is it is super slow to actually germinate. You will have this in your fridge probably a good month before you'll start seeing it actually grow little taproots and stuff. So I'm spreading this out as gently as I can. And uh, what we'll do is we'll come back in a month and see if these guys, if this worked. But again, these seeds are over a year old. Probably should have done it the first season, but uh, this is season two, so let's find out. If I forgot to mention this, um, you're actually going to put this back in the Ziploc, push the air out of it, seal it up, and then put it back in the fridge for another month or so. So um, I'm not sure if I said that clearly, so hopefully that you understand. So the milkweed's ready to go. I'll put it in the fridge for a few weeks. It takes a while to germinate. Um, just used a damp paper towel. Remember, don't make it so wet that it drips or it can cause mold issues. Just fold it over on itself, stick it in there, and forget about it for a little while. And then check on it every few weeks until you start seeing a little germination going, little tap roots and stuff. Once they sprouted enough, I put them into little cups and let them grow for about another month before I transplanted them into the ground. They are a little bit slow to start from seed and uh, you really won't get much growth the first year. It's only going to get it like a foot high. It takes a, about a year or two to really establish them well and then attract uh, monarchs. Sometimes that takes two to three years. So give your milkweed some time. I encourage you guys to at least throw some common milkweed out into your weeds. If not, I actually put them in my pollinator gardens. Uh, they can get out of control if you don't uh, you know, harvest the pods and pull them out. They, they can overgrow, but I'm trying to help out the wildlife, so that's my goal. I just throw those things everywhere. As always, though, I hope you learned something and give it a try. Be part of the solution, right? <laughs> 
Also, you can check me out on all these alternative platforms. Uh, you can also hit me up on the social media, like, uh, let's see, it's this way, MeWe, or hit me over at Twitch, any of those things if you uh, don't want to use YouTube. I'm also over on library, library that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm still there. I'm still there. Um, one last thing I do want to say, though, is I really appreciate the uh, people that have been shopping through my Amazon link. It has helped a lot because, uh, you know, YouTube's not paying us very well. And there's a link at the, the bottom of all my videos that says, hey, shop here through Amazon. If you go through that link first, uh, I, I get a little kickback, a little cut. It doesn't cost you any extra. It's just a way Amazon says thank you. And uh, I, uh, I, I depend on that. So I appreciate you helping the show, and it doesn't cost you a thing to help. Just a little time. As always, though, let me uh, sign off by saying that uh, check out my website below. If you haven't been there, you can sign up and get uh, unlisted videos. So you can get stuff that's hard to find on YouTube that I, I keep private. And uh, if you just want to keep learning more about gardening, I have tons of gardening stuff, just start watching these videos. As always, be nice to that cat. <laughs>